India is a land of dreams, where images, however fleeting, are remembered long after the journey's end. The railway is her lifeline, crossing not only distances, but bridging the boundaries of her many cultures. For over 900 million people, the railway has become a great unifier. Over one and a half million must work to keep it going. touches the lives of everyone. For nothing is more a part of this country than the trains which are part of its soul. Over a century ago, the sound of the steam locomotive could be heard across the land as it rolled through the desert and the plains of India. In those days, villages and cities were isolated by vast distances, and the coming of the train would change them forever. Legends were told of the great fire eater that walked on lines of steel and breathed white clouds of smoke. Those who did not fear it came to see it for themselves. In remote outposts where there were no stations, banyan trees often marked the train stop and people anticipated its arrival like the coming of a great ship. There was always entertainment to greet the travelers, celebrating the trip for the magical event that it was. What had taken weeks by bullock cart could now be made in a matter of days. The hero was the driver. He was assigned one engine for life and cared for it as though it were a part of him, making sure it was fed coal and watered. It was like a living creature preparing for the long journey ahead. If there ever was a heart and soul of the railway, it began here with these locomotives. 
They were the symbol of the British Empire and held the romance of an age when men and machines united the country for the first time. But this era couldn't last forever. Now, the super-fast express trains command the rails and are moving India into a new century. The railway is a living legacy of the British, who dominated the subcontinent for nearly 200 years. They laid down the first rails in 1850, and by Indian independence, dozens of railways reached across hundreds of princely states and territories. Today, all have been merged into one, stretching nearly 40,000 miles and connecting over 7,000 stations. It is the largest railway under a single management in the world. Frontier Mail, the Tamil Nadu Express, the Punjab Mail, all long-distance trains renowned in history. But one of the oldest is the Grand Trunk Express, and it travels nearly the length of the country. If there is a spirit of the railway, it is found in the thousands of small stations which have become part of the fabric of Indian life. They are centers where everyone gathers, and those who can't afford to travel will come just to watch the trains. The most impressive arrivals have always been the broad gauge steam locomotives, lovingly called the Black Beauties. They ride on the widest rails and their wheels stand taller than a man. But their presence is now becoming rare, and those who grew up with them will miss them the most. Black is beautiful. Our steam locos are our black beauties. We feel with the phasing out of steam locos as if we are doing away with one of our Kit and Kin, with whom we had blood relations. All throughout Eastern Railway, loco sheds are busy preparing their engines for a black beauty contest. It is a competition like no other. Only the best engines are entered, and to win the Black Beauty is the highest honor a shed could have. Dunbad, Rampurhat, Sahib Ganj, Asunso, Jaja. Five sheds hurry to add the finishing touches, transforming these workhorses into the beauties that they really are. This possibly should be the very last Black Beauty contest of Indian Railways. We meant to bring to you the effect of the steam locos when they were in their heydays to show how they looked, how they worked, and for just one more time, perhaps live and outlive the glory of those days when the steam locos bore the brunt of Indian Railways. Welcome to Nirvana, welcome to Nirvana, welcome to Nirvana, welcome to Nirvana.